Okay, so we're going to have a look at this nice formula for the moments of a non-negative random variable. This, so basically for any random variable that's non-negative, it can be continuous or discrete. The expectation of x to the power of p, where p is positive, can always be written as this integral, p times s to the p minus 1, then multiplied by the probability your random variable is greater than or equal to s. But first of all, we'll prove this for the continuous case where you've got a PDF. Then we'll have a look at the more general case with measure theory. Then finally, I'll talk about the discrete case at the very end. So if you've seen the, the case for the expectation, just where p is 1, you see this is a generalization of that. So it'll be the same sort of argument. You introduce a second integral, change the order of integration, and then you'll find that the formula just comes out. Okay, so let's get started. If we've got a non-negative continuous random variable with PDF fx of x, then just by definition, for p greater than 0, the expectation of x to the power of p is the integral of x to the power of p multiplied by the PDF. So the trick here is to write x to the power of p as a suitable integral, so that then when we, we change the order of integration for these double integrals, we'll get out our formula. So we write x to the p, we're going to write this as the integral between 0 and x of p s to the p minus 1 with respect to s, this new variable. So it's really easy to check that you'll get x to the power of p minus 0 to the power of p. Okay, so we can write this without the brackets now. So let's write it just as this double integral, and then you're integrating the inner integral with respect to s first, and then integrating with respect to x. So in order to change the order of integration now, we're going to apply Tonelli's theorem. So because we're integrating a non-negative function here, this is absolutely fine to change the order of integration. You don't even need to check if it converges. You'll get the same answer either way. So at the moment, the picture is like this, that you're integrating for each fixed x, s is varying between 0 and x. But then we're going to change this so that we fix s. And then you can see from the picture, for each fixed value of s, x is going from s all the way up to infinity. And then for your outer integral, your limits are going to be between 0 and infinity. s varies between 0 and infinity. And then you can see for each fixed value of s, x goes between s and infinity. OK, so what's nice here now is this p to the s times s to the p minus 1 doesn't actually depend on x. So you can take this out of your inner integral. So let's do that. And then I'll put some brackets around this inner integral just to make it really clear. And then what we can do here is you can see here we're integrating the PDF just over this region where x is greater than or equal to s. So all you need to do to finish off here is notice that's equal to the probability that your random variable x is greater than or equal to s. Then this is the formula we set out to prove. So now we've proven this for the sort of continuous case where you've got a PDF. And then if you want to have a quick look at the more general version using measure theory, so I've written it with this notation, probability x is in dx to show that you're integrating with respect to this probability measure. So you might write this as dp, p is your probability measure, or d mu, where mu is your probability measure. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, but then it's the exact same sort of sequence of steps. You can apply Tonelli's theorem for your integral using measure theory, and then you'll get the exact same formula out. And what's really cool about this is the more general case with measure theory, this actually includes the discrete case. So I'll show you now what the argument looks like for the discrete case, just to make this really clear that this does still work. So you start off your expectation of x to the p for a discrete integer-valued random variable. Again, it has to be non-negative. So the expectation of x to the p, you can now write this as the sum n to the power of p multiplied by the probability x is equal to n. And then you write n to the power of p as this in inner integral here between 0 and n of p s to the p minus 1, just as before. And now, again, you can use a different version of Tonelli's theorem to exchange. Now, it's not changing the order of integration, but you're interchanging the order of integration and summation. And this is absolutely fine as long as you're integrating a positive function, you're summing positive terms. That's absolutely fine. You'll get the same answer either way, whether or not it converges. So when you change the order of integration here, you'll find that you get the exact same result as before. You might find this is a bit strange writing the expectation of x to the p as an integral. Because you may have noticed here the probability that x is greater than or equal to s, if this is a discrete integer-valued random variable, well, the probability x is greater than or equal to 1 and a half, this is just the same as x being greater than or equal to 2. So we'll have a look at how to write this in a slightly better way. Okay, so the expectation of x to the p, we've got this formula for it now with the integral. 
but you can notice here the probability x is greater than or equal to s. This is going to be constant between different integers. So if I split this integral up into the integral between 0 and 1 and the integral between 1 and 2 and so on, so let's write this as the sum over k of the integral between k minus 1 and k of this function. Well, here you can see that between k minus 1 and k, the probability that x is greater than or equal to s, this is just constant, other than at this specific point where s is equal to k minus 1. But you can just ignore that when we're doing the integral here with respect to our normal Lebesgue measure, because that doesn't contribute that individual point. So you can say in this interval, probability x is greater than or equal to s, you may as well just replace that by the probability x is greater than or equal to k. And then this is really helpful because now you can take that probability out of the integral because that no longer depends on s. So we do that, now we've got the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of the probability x is greater than or equal to k multiplied by this integral. So this integral is really easy to evaluate. You can see that this is just going to be k to the p minus k minus 1 to the power of p. And perhaps you prefer to write this as your k to the p minus k minus 1 to the p before your probability. So this gives you another way of writing the expectation of x to the p for a discrete random variable as a sum. So this is another really nice formula, perhaps less well used as, than the continuous one that we've seen, but still very satisfying to prove.